And let's again go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Our precious Holy Father, Lord, how thankful we are for your blessings. We're thankful for the word uh, that's been preached. Lord, for the songs that have been sung, for the prayers of, of your people. Lord, we're thankful for <clears throat> the opportunity that we have that we can even come together. Lord, and for those who have come out this morning. We pray, our Father, that you continue to bless our time. And Lord, we pray that you'll um, bless now the preaching of your word. We pray for those who are not here. We ask that you'll be with them in a special way. Lord, we ask that you'll be with us <clears throat> as we conduct the business of the church later. And we pray that you'll forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. In Romans chapter 4, we'll begin reading in verse 1, and we'll go down to verse 8. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. I want to preach a message this morning on the subject of justification, our legal standing before God. Justification, our legal standing before God. Justification is defined by T.P. Simmons in this way. He wrote that it was that instantaneous, everlasting, gracious, free, judicial act of God whereby on account of the merit of Christ's blood and righteousness a repentant believing sinner is freed from the penalty of the law restored to God's favor and considered as possessing the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ by virtue of all of which he receives adoption as a son. It's quite a mouthful. He's right. But out in the margin of my book, <clears throat> which by the way, we used that at King's Edition one time as a, as a textbook for systematic theology, but uh, I wrote in the, in, in the margin there, or at the bottom rather, simply stated, justification is the judicial act of God that frees the sinner from the penalty of the law through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So that's the simplicity of it. What a blessing this is to consider that for the child of God, even though we deserve condemnation, we have justification. And that's the first thing I want us to consider. What we deserve. We see here 
The example is given of Abraham in this text. That Abraham had nothing to glory in. So it is with us. We have nothing to glory in. Whether we look at Abraham or David, as he does in verse 6, or ourselves, the person to the right or to the left of you, the person in the mirror, none of us have anything to glory in. Because we deserve nothing. Nothing from God. We deserve condemnation. Condemnation is also a legal term. Condemnation, according to Webster, was the is the legal or the judicial act of declaring one guilty and dooming him to punishment. When God condemns someone, the punishment is eternal. The lake of fire. That's what we deserve. That's what we deserve. Why? Well, in Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5 and verse 18. Well, let's let's start with uh, let's start with verse 13. Well, no, let's let's go all the way back to verse 12. He says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law of sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense... <clears throat> so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses, unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so the righteousness of one, the free gift, came upon all men unto justification of life. There was a problem in this world. And you and I were not part of the solution. In fact, we inherited the problem. Every one of us in this room and everyone that's listening to this message, we were a son and daughter. We are a son and daughter of Adam. And in Adam, we fell. We sin. We are sinners. There was no election, no vote that was chosen by us, but Adam was our representative head at the Garden of Eden. God put him there. Let me 
tell you, none of us dare raise our fist and say, Adam, you messed up. Or God, you made a mistake. Because let me tell you, we couldn't have found anybody better than Adam. And the fact is, if we would have made a choice, or if we were there, we would have messed up and probably a lot quicker than Adam did. And that's the fact. That's the fact. Whether you think it fair or not, we are all condemned because of what happened back there in Eden. We fell. We inherited that sin nature. But that's not all. We're not passive recipients only of a sin nature. Because the Bible tells us an experience we understand it to be true. In Titus chapter 3, for instance. Titus chapter 3. Verse 3 says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. In other words, you and I were not just passive recipients of Adam's sins, but you and I, we were sinners too. We caught the ball, so to speak. It was passed down, the torch was passed, this sin nature. But we did some stuff actively with it. And we all, we all can look back in our own lives and know that not only were we sinners by birth, but we were sinners by choice. But if, if we can say anything about free will, this is it. This is it. Sinners going to sin. And that's what we did. That was our nature. That's who we were. And we loved every minute of it. So yes, we deserve condemnation because of what happened back in Adam. But that's not the only thing. We deserve condemnation because of our own actions. Our own actions. I mean, Titus chapter 3, verse 3 tells us this about the sinners that we were. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, look at this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Beginning verse 9, he says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you're washed. 
but you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. The church at Corinth was full of people who at one time had been just as filthy, rotten sinners, rebelling, committing high treason against the God that loved them. He says, that's what you were, but you're not anymore. He says, you were, but now you're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, all that. But they weren't that anymore, you see. My point is that they deserved condemnation for their past, but they weren't. They weren't something in heaven. There are two types of sinners in this world, but all are sinners. Understand this. There are saved sinners and there are lost sinners. We could say there's elect and there's reprobate, but we can't tell the difference there. Just understand this. God only had one son who was sinless. He died for the rest of us. He was buried and rose again. We we deserved we deserved condemnation. He says, "Such were some of you." Praise God that. been saved. We don't have to worry about sin anymore. That's not what the Bible teaches, is it? No, in fact, in fact, the reality is we don't deserve what we've got now. Because not only what we are in Adam, what we, what we were before we are saved, but Think about what we've done since we've been saved. In Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, look at this now. The Apostle Paul, probably one of the greatest missionaries that's ever existed, I would imagine. Maybe somebody greater than Paul has come along, somewhere along through the Middle Ages or something, as a missionary, but we don't know. That's God's business. As far as the record goes, I'd imagine Paul was the greatest missionary I ever read about. But in Romans chapter 7, look what he wrote here in verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. Or what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. For if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law when I would do good, and evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. And he goes on to say, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? 
I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Oh, we don't deserve anything because presently we're still at the base level, we're still filthy sinners. We're just safe sinners. We have a battle going on within us right now. Daily. The struggle. Evil is present with us. But I'd like to point out that though we deserve condemnation, as God's people, we need not fear it. We need not fear it. In Romans chapter 8, simply to not be against us. That would be amazing enough. But God doesn't stop there. He says, if God be for us. God is for us. God is for you. God is for me. God is for Sovereign Grace Baptist Church. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall take anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us. Though we deserve to be condemned for the sins of our past, the present, for who we were in Adam, we need not fear. Our accusers may be many, Satan, our conscience, the world, our friends. You know, sometimes our friends, especially after we're first saved, say, who are you? Who do you think you are? I know you, you're, you're, you're telling us to live holy, but we've seen you. We know what you do. We must realize it is God that justifies. You see, in and of myself, I'm nothing. In and of yourself, you are nothing. But in Jesus Christ, we're justified. When God looks at us, because of what He has done, because of what Christ has done, God doesn't see Adam. God doesn't see my sin, your sin, past, present, or future. He sees the righteousness of Christ. Now, 
Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You see, we wouldn't even need justification except for the fact that we are ungodly. We're ungodly sinners in need of justification. And the only way we can find justification is through Christ. In Romans chapter 3, Romans 3 Verse 20, he says, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is, is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We cannot be justified through the keeping of the law. None of us can do it perfectly. And anyway, even if we started today, what about those laws that we broke in yesterday? The past. How are those to be? But our justification this morning is based freely on His grace through the redemption as in Christ Jesus. Grace, as I mentioned earlier, is the unmerited favor of God to undeserving sinners. Thus, our justification is free, meaning it doesn't cost us a thing, though the Lord paid for it. That leaves us with no boast. We have nothing to be prideful of. There's no salvation to be had, no justification to be had without Christ. And certainly there's nowhere to be found. Beginning to ending in anything that we can boast in. In Romans chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. This is the only way it could work. Our sins were laid upon Christ. They were laid to Christ's account. And His righteousness was laid to our account. That's the only way it would work. We had no righteousness. In fact, the Bible tells us that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. That's where we were. That's how hopeless... We were without Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. We stand before God justified not on our merit, but on Christ's merit. That's where we're at today. That's where we'll be tomorrow. And one day when we stand before God at the judgment, that's where our standing will be. It's on Christ. There's a beautiful passage in Jeremiah chapter 50. 
Jeremiah chapter 50. Verse 20. A lot of times there's some gold nuggets that we miss out of the Old Testament, I think. But I love this. I know it's speaking of the Old Testament saints there, but it applies to us. Look at what it says here. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found. For I will pardon them whom I reserve. Oh, listen, folks. This is how this works. That even when the iniquity shall be sought for, you could even apply it to yourself. It applies, it's applicable. In those days and that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of David Green shall be sought for. There shall be none. Why? Why? Was David Green great? Let me tell you something. David Green is no greater than Israel. That's a fact. That's a fact. And if you're honest with yourself, you aren't either. All of God's people have been given a full pardon. But justification is more than just a pardon. The two words are closely related. Pardon of two men that are sinners. Pardon is of, two, of men that are sinners and who remain such. So when a president, for instance, issues a pardon, guess what? That man is still a sinner, isn't he? He's still committed some crime. He's just been pardoned by the president. The crime is still there. It's just he's just been pardoned of the crime. Justification goes beyond that. Because justification pronounces a person righteous. As if you've never sinned at all. The slate has been wiped clean. It is one thing for a man to be brought before the court as a criminal to be tried, cast and condemned, and after that pardon. But it's another thing for a man to be tried by the law and be found and declared righteous as though he'd never transgressed at all. That's what we're talking about here. Justification is not to be confused with sanctification. We'll look at that another time. But look at, uh, look at Romans chapter 8 once again. <clears throat> kind of begin, begin to bring this to a close. Romans 8 verses 28 through 31. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, 
He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, whom he justified, them he also glorified. Just as sure as our predestination is back yonder before the foundation of the world. And just as sure as our glorification will be, so is our justification. In the mind, the plan, the purpose of Almighty God for each one of His children you may be a brand new child of God or a seasoned saint. You see, your standing before God is the same because of God's grace, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, because of God's sovereign and eternal plan, His love. Oh, how this ought to excite us. Were, were it dependent upon ourselves, we'd goof it up, wouldn't we? We'd mess everything up. But looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, beginning to end, it's all about Jesus, our great God. Amen. In Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, and verses 1 and 2, he says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Being justified, he says, oh, and... What a great blessing this is. He says, therefore, being justified, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace. Where there was no peace, you cannot sin against a just and a holy God and find peace. You cannot find peace. There's a great gap that has been broken. It was broken at the Garden of Eden. It can't be put back together. You see, Adam tried to. He, he ate of the fruit and everything was busted up and he tried to put it back, didn't he? He grabbed the, 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 he grabbed the leaves and he covered himself up. He went and hid. But he couldn't make things right. And nobody has been able to fix it because it's not fixable. The only way to fix it is through Jesus Christ. There is no peace without Jesus. We have access to God by faith into this grace. We can be sure of heaven. No, justification does not make us inwardly perfect. Understand that. But it makes us righteous as to our standing. And that's what this is. This is a legal term. It has to do with our standing before God. We cannot confuse this. We're not sinlessly perfect in and of ourselves. And even though we have been declared justified before God, let us be careful that we never use this as a ticket to sin. Someone says, well, if I believed like you do, I'd sin all I want. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. The fact is, we sin more than we want. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Paul, as he wrote to the folks there at Rome, says there in verse 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? 
Verse 2, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? The flesh rises up and says, well, this is great. Before God, I am I, I'm justified. And I can do whatever I want. The Holy Spirit answers and says, no. No. We still have we still have an obligation to live a holy life before God. Praise God for this justification. Let us rejoice in it to know that when we fall, when we trip, when we fail, the things that we've done in the past those have all been covered. And we stand before God based on the righteousness of Christ, not on who we are. May God add the blessing 